Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in the past we've discussed a lot of different events that happened to our planet that to some extent influenced life on the planet for one reason or another. In most of those cases though, those events happened millions and millions of years ago. For example, various supernova that we know influenced the planet in the past. There are quite a few videos about this in the description. But there are other events that we've detected that only happened in the last few thousands of years that seem to have incredible effects on the planet as well and we only started to discover them in the last few decades. And these events and their effects were only discovered in the last few years. The most famous such event was found approximately 10 years ago in 2012 and officially is known as the 774-775 carbon-14 spike. And that's because either in 774 or 775 something happened to our planet and it resulted in a dramatic increase of the formation of carbon-14 discovered as a kind of a layer in various tree rings in a lot of different trees around the planet, especially trees that were at least a few thousand years old. And generally this means that something dramatic did happen in the upper atmosphere, very likely resulting in a lot of radiation reaching the surface. And that's of course based on what we know about carbon-14 and how it's generated, with the generation process being important to understand in order to see where we're going with this story. Now obviously a lot of life on the planet uses carbon dioxide, but the carbon molecule in here can actually be a little bit different. It can be typical carbon-12, which is of course the stable version of this particular atom, but in other cases it can also be the radioisotope known as carbon-14. Carbon-14 is a lot more rare and is actually produced when various types of cosmic rays and relatively powerful radiation strikes the nitrogen atom in the upper atmosphere, resulting in the production of this relatively short-lived isotope. Its half-life is approximately 5,730 years. And generally the background cosmic radiation striking the planet is more or less the same every day. Although it does vary depending on the solar activity. Which of course means that carbon-14 is generated in the upper atmosphere at a relatively same rate. But once in a while when there is something really active happening in the upper atmosphere, such as for example some kind of a powerful solar flare, or in some more extreme cases, some kind of a supernova, releasing huge amounts of energy that then strikes the upper atmosphere, something that's more theoretical, but something that we believe does happen once in a while. In this case, the production of carbon-14 increases dramatically, and thus more of it starts to be deposited in various trees on the planet, appearing as a very specific spike in certain tree rings. And this is essentially how the scientists in the last few years were able to analyze and discover a lot of different very powerful events that happen on the planet in the last 10,000 years or so, by basically looking at various tree rings from various ancient trees. And in 2012 they found the biggest one, or at least one of the biggest ones. The spike here involved an increase of carbon-14 by approximately 1.2%, which would suggest the radiation levels at least 20 times higher than normal background radiation. Now obviously this would not result in an extinction event, and most of the life on the planet would probably not even notice it, but it's still very important for our modern way of life. This type of an event would result in a dramatic increase of radiation in outer space, affecting the astronauts, affecting the spacecrafts and a lot of different satellites, and just generally affecting our way of life as well. The satellites might not even survive such an event. And because this event was originally discovered in the Japanese trees and by Japanese researchers, Today it's unofficially referred to as the Miyake event. As you might have discovered in one of the previous videos from a few months ago, turns out that these events are actually not really rare. More events have been discovered in the last 10,000 years, with some potentially even more powerful than this one. And so in the last few years, especially since we've discovered all of this, a lot of scientists wanted to learn more about it, specifically trying to figure out how exactly this would affect the planet if it happened today, what exactly happened here, how frequent are these events, and most importantly, was this basically coming from our sun and was a result of some kind of a super flare suggesting that our sun is just a little bit more mysterious, this by the way was the original proposition and the original explanation here, or is it not really from our sun and from somewhere entirely different, potentially another mysterious event we do not understand. Short spoiler, it's not our sun it seems. So first of all, in the last few years, a lot of different researchers from different continents discovered very similar signs of these events in a lot of different countries, Germany, United States, New Zealand, suggesting of course that this was a global event that lasted for at least a year, possibly even longer. And it involved a very sharp increase in radiation, possibly from some kind of a bright flash or something else that happened very suddenly, followed by a relatively gradual decrease over the period of several years. 
it's a little bit easier to see it in this graph where you can kind of see that within about 5 years it returned back to normal. But the spike itself is very obvious and very pronounced. In this case this was actually a confirmation study based on the increase of production of beryllium on top of carbon-14. Once again suggesting that this was something related to radiation. But it doesn't seem like it was a very long event, it obviously disappeared pretty quickly, but affected the atmosphere of the planet quite dramatically more so than any other event in the last few thousands of years. Naturally, one of the first things the scientists wanted to do is to actually see if there is any historical record of any of this, possibly written down by the ancient empires, for example by the British or maybe by the Chinese. And it just so happens that in the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle, there is a mentioning of something like a red crucifix appearing in the heavens after sunset. But what exactly was being described? Well, it could be the aurora, which would also imply that something extremely powerful happened on the surface of the sun. But the question is of course, could it have been something else? Could it have been, for example, a supernova? Could it have been something entirely different, possibly detected by someone else? Well, back then, the Chinese astronomers were much better at writing things down. But the ancient records from the mid-770s don't really tell us much. They do talk about one aurora that happened in 776, and they also mentioned some kind of an anomalous thunderstorm in 775. But no mention of unusual star or unusual observations in the night skies. So a large visible supernova remnant is probably out of the question. Well, this is kind of where this new research comes in. A more thorough analysis using various tree ring deposits, trying to model what might have happened here. With one of the first and one of the more important discoveries in the paper, suggesting that these tree rings don't actually correlate with the typical sunspot activity. And here they didn't just look at one event, they've actually taken a look at several that we discussed in that previous video that you can find in the description, with several major events already discovered in the last 10,000 years. Suggesting that these events, whatever they were, were actually happening independent of the solar activity. Now normally when it comes to solar flares, we expect them to happen in a kind of a predictable manner. For example, during the peak of the solar activity when there are a lot of sunspots, we expect some of the most powerful flares. But in this case, the spikes in radiocarbon were happening when the solar activity was more or less weak, and certain spikes even persisted for multiple years. Something that's even apparent in this graph right here. And so unless our sun was for some reason active for several years straight, it would be very difficult to explain this using the sun. Then there's also a discrepancy between various rings coming from various regions. In some regions, they showed an extremely sharp spike that happened very suddenly, whereas other regions were actually displaying a much slower spike that very likely lasted for two to three years, hinting that whatever was happening to our planet was probably a much longer event, potentially an event that lasted for a couple of years, and actually some kind of a space event, some kind of a space outburst, or some kind of a space storm that lasted for several years. And it could even be a supernova, but just not a supernova that was visible to us, or at least a supernova that was not detected by ancient astronomers. And there is another video that talks about this in a little bit more detail, but there are certain types of supernova that we've actually just recently discovered that in theory can produce huge amounts of X-ray radiation that would be obviously invisible in optical light that can actually affect the planet at hundreds of light years away from us, resulting in extremely powerful emissions that would affect the upper atmosphere. On top of this, in October of 2022, we've experienced this. The most powerful gamma ray burst ever that occurred approximately 2 billion light years away from us, that despite the distance, actually did have an effect on the upper atmosphere as well. More detail in the video in the description. These events are kind of rare. But a powerful supernova only visible in, for example, X-rays, could maybe explain at least some of these events. But in reality, at the moment, nobody really knows what kind of happened here. And a lot of these events are still completely unexplained. It could have been a powerful supernova or some kind of a powerful astrophysical event that we do not understand yet, or it could have also been a super flare coming from the sun, an event that we don't actually think our sun is capable of, but obviously we could be wrong, or more importantly, it could be something else entirely new, something we actually do not know anything about. Right now, based on all of the observations and all of the analysis here, there's really no single simple explanation that kind of explains exactly what happened in the last 10,000 years to produce these very powerful events. But understanding these events would be very important. Current analysis suggests that these happen at least once every thousand years. There's actually approximately 1% chance that we're going to be seeing one in the next 100 years or so. And so it's not an impossibility, and if it does happen, it would affect us quite a lot. 
As a matter of fact, this particular study that examined an event that happened 9,000 years ago discovered something even more powerful. And another event was found approximately 200 years later in 993. So they do seem to be kind of random, which creates a bit of a problem, because it probably is not from the Sun. Our Sun is a little bit more predictable than that. And so if it is coming from some kind of an astrophysical event, some kind of a major explosion, or possibly even a supernova, that would make it a lot more intriguing because it means that we definitely don't understand what effects these have on our planet. And it would also mean that we need to study this as soon as possible. This could actually happen to us in the next few decades, having quite dramatic effects on our technology and on our way of life. But just to clarify, even though the radiation levels here increase quite a lot, it would not actually affect the life on the planet that much. In other words, it's unlikely to produce effects that would cause some kind of an extinction event or increase the dangerous radiation reaching the surface and thus affecting life that way. That's very unlikely to happen. But then again, the spike was still pretty big and so what actual effects it's going to have on the planet, I guess only time will tell. When it actually happens. This is definitely not the question of if, it's a question of when. And if by then we start traveling across the solar system and start interacting with the outer space a little bit more, an event of that power would definitely produce huge amounts of radiation for anyone in outer space, destroying a lot of technology in the process. So if we do become a little bit more advanced when it comes to interplanetary travel and possibly start saddling the Moon and Mars, this type of an event is definitely something we need to be concerned about because it can potentially destroy everything we've built in space. Nevertheless, these Miyake events, as they're known, currently represent some of the more mysterious and potentially dangerous events that can happen to our planet that we basically don't understand almost at all. But the events we definitely have to prepare for, just in case. So once we learn more, I'll make sure to follow this up in another video. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, maybe share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.